Okay. Today I'm going to make some uh, what I call timing boxes. It's a box that we put our breeder queens in and we gives us an opportunity to isolate her on a single frame and uh, the ones we're using right now are kind of old and fatigued so I'm going to make some brand new ones. I'm going to use some of this HDO plywood scrap that I have left over from making lids and bottoms. Um, normally I'd make pieces and parts like this out of white pine but I have this scrap HDO and pine is so expensive I'm just going to go ahead and use the plywood here. Um, I'm going to make five boxes so I need 20 pieces and a deep box is always 9 and 5 eighths that's a proper dimension so I'm going to cut out 20 pieces 9 and 5 eighths and then uh, cut them into length for sides and fronts and backs. So we're going to put a dado set on, stacking dado sets. I prefer that with the wobble style. It'll be a more precision cut. Just, it's just a better job. So we're going to be making a three-quarter inch wide dado. So I'm going to stack the set uh, a sixteenth of an inch past three-quarter. And we'll put on that sacrificial fence. And then we can put the dado blade into the fence a little bit. And we can really dial in our cut just right. buy a bee box from almost any manufacturer, the frame rest is 5 eighths of an inch deep. Okay. If you put a flat lid on a colony, that only gives you a quarter inch between the top bars and the underside of the flat lid, yeah. which is just a little bit shy of what would be considered the proper bee space. So just for these breeder queens, which will never get a second story box stacked on, on them, right. we're going to make that frame rest three quarters so they'll have a proper three eighths B space between the top bars and the underside of the lid. Okay. John has just asked me, you know, why are we doing this and why don't we do it to our normal colonies? Well, we kind of cheat on our normal colonies. After a little bit of use, they get a little bit of propolis built up on the underside of the lid okay. and perhaps a little bit of propolis on the box edges. And unless you scrape that absolutely clean, yeah. you've always got another sixteenth of an inch or something with that buildup. So even though it's not three eighths, it's enough. It's it okay. might be five sixteenths or something. I've always said that uh, B space can be anywhere between five sixteenths and seven sixteenths. Uh, uh, Mr. Daydant used to argue, argue with uh, Mr. Root about B space <laughs> way back in the 1800s. Uh, Mr. Root said it should be three eighths, and Mr. Daydant said it should be uh, one half. He considered anything up to one half being okay, but I like anything between five sixteenths and seven sixteenths. Okay. Three eighths, in my view, being perfect for okay. B space. Uh, yeah, the, we're actually doing the same thing we did to our nuke boxes. I never plan on stacking nuke boxes on top of each other either. Right. Um, when you put a standard piece of equipment on top of another, there should be something around an eighth of an inch space between the bottom bars and the bottom of the box. Okay. When you have two boxes together, that creates somewhere in the, in the realm of proper B space. Okay. But because we'll never be stacking these boxes, yeah. we're going to create our proper B space within the single box. So this would be a front and a back opposing. So we run, we, we leave the dado set at the same depth. These grooves are the same depth as, depth as our dados around the side. And I take all the chippers out and I just use the two blades, the, the two end blades, and they make exactly a quarter inch when you stack them together on the table saw. And that's what we're putting this groove in with. The first groove from the edge of the board to the center of this groove is eight and a half inches. 
The second groove is 10 and a half inches, and that gives us the perfect dimension for putting that isolated frame in there for the queen. We're going to be making uh, these blanks of Luan into a queen excluder insert. We'll just cut a center, cut the center out of these boards and attach a piece of queen excluder so the bees can come and go. And these things are going to slide down in the finished box right in these grooves. Masonite works. We just happen to have some scrap Luan on the premises, so that's what we're using today. Okay, we're just putting our uh, timing boxes together. We're going to put a bead of glue here and here. Pretty, pretty good bead of glue there. You can always wipe it off. We'll make Seth nervous here. And Seth, it's got to be perfect for the video. <laughs> yes, sir. No messing up. <laughs> Okay. And these are, I think they're inch and three quarter screws. Yeah, number eight by inch and three quarter. Diamond box. The staples just keep it from wiggling around while I get the screws in. to make some strips that go on the bottom board that match the grooves in this box so that the Luan inserts with the queen excluder can set right down on some strips on this bottom board. The dimension we're looking for, I think I'm going to make about a 10 inch strip across here so we're down to maybe a, a less than a 5 inch entrance on one side and I think that makes the inner strip here 18 and 3 eighths to make this all work out right. So we're going to cut some pressure treated wood to 18 and 3 eighths, cut it up into 3 eighths inch deep strips because I use a 3 eighths uh, deep bottom board. That's what I like. I prefer the 3 eighths over the 3 quarter. And we'll make some strips to match this in here, make the pattern for the Luan to sit down on. got marks on the bottom board here at eight and a half, ten and a half, eight and a half, ten and a half. Need some glue. This happens to be tight bond two. Tight bond three is better glue, but I think I figured out that tight bond two is more weather or moisture resistant than Type Bond 3. So what we're doing is we're using Type Bond 3 on our frames, but we're using Type Bond 2 on boxes and bottom boards and lids and things like that. Now the reason I don't use a solid piece across here is the bottom bar in the frame that falls between these queen excluder inserts is only about an eighth of an inch off of these strips. So we need this void in the middle so the bottom bar isn't bottoming out down here on a, what could have been a solid piece. I prefer the individual strips. We have some scrap glue on here that we're going to use for the inserts. 
Um, it needs to be the exact same dimension as the sideboards on the box, which is 9 and 5 eighths. I want these Luon inserts to be about an eighth of an inch short so that they have a little room in the grooves in the box, a little bit of play so they'll slide down nicely. And I want to re-square the ends of these boards to make sure they're really perfectly square. Um, that's important so they'll slide down there nicely. This square is an inch and a half. I want you to create lines an inch and a half around this whole board. Like this. And then when you've done that to every board, I want to put, take about a 3 8 drill bit and just drill a hole right in the corners there. That way we can run our little saw from corner to corner. We're going to cut some queen excluder up. I think I'm just going to do it on the table saw, but I'm going to use a fine finish blade. This is normally meant for uh, paneling or fine plywood work. I think it'll do a better job on these queen excluders. We've come up with a dimension of eight and a half by 18 for this queen excluder. So I think we'll go with the eight and a half first. I will screw the bottom board onto this box. I don't want that coming apart. Um, I'm going to put the queen excluder mounted on the Luon in these grooves with the excluder away from the queen. It gives her that little extra space there, that, I don't know, that void, the thickness of the Luon. Gives a little more space in there. Normally I run 10 frames in my boxes, but in this instance, because we need this extra space to play with, I'm only working with nine frames. There's a fair amount of play on this center frame. We want to be able to get that out of there without uh, having too tight of a space. Of course, we got this odd looking lid with the offset feeder hole. The feeder will go, the jar or bucket, whatever we choose to use, will be on top of the bulk of the bees over on these five frames. And that's a good flat lid. It matches that Luon perfectly. I think we got a good box here. We'll get her painted and Friday we'll use it. Um, sometimes the queen has to be stimulated just a little bit, and not much. We're not trying to drown them in syrup, but if it's a dearth, they need just a little stimulation to help the queen lay. And all it takes is one of those five pound honey jars with one or two holes in the lid. Doesn't have to be a big bucket. Gotta keep me straight. found that we, we like to make sure there are plenty of bees in this slot with her right off the bat. Uh, for some reason if you don't put bees in there um, it takes them a while to filter through the excluders and it takes several hours before she gets around the lane. So I'll shake some bees in this with this frame. 
And I like to put brood frames right beside the frame she's laying on. much better than the old system that didn't have the Luan or the Masonite uh, reinforcement with the excluder. This work, like this is going to be a lot nicer. Uh, we just craft once a week, but you could set her up on that frame, get it laid up, and maybe put a colored thumbtack on it and move it out of there and give her another frame. You know, you could do multiple frames a week with the same frame if you want with this system. We can feed her if we want, but we don't need to today because there's a moderate nectar flow coming in. All of our breeder queens have a number, so this lid will stick with this hive. 